Before you start actually using this kiln with the microwave, please be sure to use the included safety glasses. Charge the crucible with one part potassium nitrate, five parts borax, and whatever gold or precious metals that you're melting. It all goes straight in the microwave. Be sure to have the separator pads to keep the kiln off the bottom surface of the microwave. Start out with about 10 to 15 minutes. You especially need to check frequently after 10 minutes. That's when the temperature will start to really heat up. And that's uh, at 10 minutes, it's not too bad. But after that, it really starts heating up. You need to check to make sure your microwave's not getting too hot with your bare hand every once in a while. You need to check to make sure none of the borax is overflowed out of the crucible because the glass borax absorbs heat and it deteriorates the insulation. As you see here, there's some damage from some glass that got out into the insulation. You need to stop and take that out if that ever happens. You can stir your gold glass solution uh, with a graphite stirring rod to try to help it uh, congeal into one bead of gold. Uh, another thing is to do just to leave this thing in there for a good five minutes after everything's melted to give the gold plenty of time to form into one giant bead. Pull it out and quickly pour into a suitable container. And uh, then it's just a matter of allowing everything to cool and then to chip away the glass to reveal the gold. In this case, my gold kind of stuck to this uh, broken crucible I poured it into, so I'm going to have to chisel the gold off of the uh, crucible as well. Once I get the gold out, I'll be tapping it off lightly with a hammer. Uh, actually, I might recommend a wooden mallet to uh, bump off any remaining bits of borax glass that's on the gold. And then it's time to take it in and weigh it. And for this batch, it added up to a very attractive 4.8 grams of pure gold recovered from electronic scrap.